7.30, we'll call the meeting to order. Start with the salute to the flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Start with uh, swearing in. We have three members to swear in. To start with the two board members, uh, Ms. Doreen Chevalier. Yep. All right. Um, you want to do it down here, wherever, wherever you want to. Okay, yeah. okay perfect. Yes, fine. Okay. Right. Can you hear me fine with this? Okay. Uh, if you want to repeat after me, I say your full name. Say your full name. Doreen Chevalier. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Or affirm. Or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of, of New Jersey. And the Constitution of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will bear true. True faith and allegiance. True faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in the state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially and justly perform all the duties of my position. I will impartially. <laughs> and justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties of my position. All the duties of my position. As board member for the zoning board of adjustment. As board member for the zoning board of adjustment. <laughs> for the township of Bullbridge. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Yeah. I'll have you sign that. Yeah, yeah, I'll do the same Leon, how do you pronounce your last name? Scogno. Okay. <laughs> Next we have Leon Scogno. I, say your full name. Leon Scogno. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of New Jersey. And the Constitution of New Jersey. That I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance. That I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance. To the same and to the governments established in the United States. To the same and to the governments established in the United States. And in the state, under the authority of the people. And in the states, under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of my position. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of my position. As board member for the Zoning Board of Adjustment for the Township of... Uh, go ahead. As board member for the Zoning Board of Adjustment for the Township of Old Bridge, to the best of my ability. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And finally, we have uh, Mr. Louis Izzo, the alternate. Uh, Mr. Izzo, uh, repeat after me. I, say your full name. I, Louis Izzo. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and. Go ahead. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of New Jersey. Constitution of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will. And to the governments established in the United States and in the state. And to the governments established in the United States and in the state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of my position. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of my position. As alternate number one for the Zoning Board of Adjustment for the Township of Old Bridge to the best of my ability. As alternate number one for the Zoning Board of Adjustment to the 
Thank you, Mr. Rizal. All right, next on the agenda, uh, Ms. C, if you want to do a roll call, please. Mr. Sullivan? Here. Mr. Connor? Here. Mr. Stoner? Here. Ms. Chevalier? Here. Mr. Scogno? Here. Ms. Andrews? Here. Ms. Testaverde? Here. Mr. Izzo? Here. All right, with the roll call done, I'd like to move on to nominations and appointments. First, Chairperson, do we have any nominations? I or to nominate James Sullivan as Chairperson. Second. Do we have any others? Seeing none, I would move to a vote. Ms. C? Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Stoner? Yes. Ms. Chevalier? Yes. Mr. Scogno? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Ms. Testaverde? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, uh, board members, for your faith in me for uh, leading the board in 2023. And uh, Happy New Year to each and every one of you and your families. We'll continue on with the uh, nominations. For vice chairperson, I'd like to nominate uh, Jim Connor. I'll second it. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, we'll close the nominations. Roll call, please, Ms. C. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Stoner? Yes. Ms. Chevalier? Yes. Mr. Scogno? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Ms. Testaverde? Yes. Chairman Sullivan? Yes. Uh, we'll accept nomination for the Office of Secretary. I'd like to nominate Ben Stoner as office uh, as secretary. Second. Is there any other uh, nominations for secretary? Hearing none, I'll close it. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Stoner? Yes. Ms. Chevalier? Yes. Mr. Scogno? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Ms. Testaverde? Yes. Chairman Sullivan? Yes. Except nominations for appointments to the Vice Secretary, I'd like to nominate Natalie C. I'll second that. Is there any other uh, nominations? Hearing none, you can roll call for yourself. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Stoner? Yes. Ms. Chevalier? Yes. Mr. Scogno? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Ms. Testaverde? Yes. Chairman Sullivan? Absolutely. <laughs> and thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Yes. My pleasure. Uh, board members will move forward uh, with the nominations for the professionals uh, needed for uh, consulting for the year 2023. Uh, first one would be for board attorney nominations. I'm going to uh, put up uh, Dasty and Associates PC. Is there any other nominations for board attorneys? Hearing none, I'll close it. Roll call, please, for Dasty and Associates. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Stoner? Yes. Ms. Chevalier? Yes. Mr. Scogno? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Ms. Testaverde? Yes. Chairman Sullivan? Yes. And by the way, for those sitting in the audience, the gentleman seated next to us is an attorney, and uh, his name is Jeffrey Cheney. Uh, he is uh, me uh, a member of the firm of Dasty and Associates. Chris Dasty uh, leads that firm and uh, is normally here, but uh, he is uh, taken away from us tonight for other business. So we welcome Mr. Cheney and we thank him for his guidance and his counsel this evening. Uh, we'll move forward on planning consultant nominations. Uh, we're going to have four of them. Uh, the reason we do that is because we have, uh, in the event that there's conflicts, we have, can't have conflicts, so we have to hire outside agencies often to uh, handle that particular uh, issue. So it's gonna be the same with planning, uh, with engineering, and with traffic consultants. And it's a normal course of business. So we're going to um, uh, nominate four. The first one I'd like to put up is Environmental Resolutions, Inc. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Stoner? Yes. Ms. Chevalier? Yes. Mr. Scogno? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. 
Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. Uh, second one I'd like to put up is CME Associates. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scognum. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. We're uh, third one. I'd like to uh, place in nomination Remington and Vernick engineers. Second. Roll call, please, Ms. Singh. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scogno. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. And finally, board, uh, I'd like to put up for the number four uh, planning consultants nominations, Harbor Consultants. I'll second. Roll call, please, Ms. Singh. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scogno. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. Right, likewise, board members will move now to engineering consultant uh, nominations. Uh, we're going to have three of those. The first one I would put up is Environmental Resolutions, Inc. I'll second. Roll call, please, Ms. Singh. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scogno. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. Uh, the second one I'd like to put in nomination is CME Associates. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scogno. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. Uh, for the third, uh, Harbor Consultants. Second. Mr. Stoner seconds. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scogno. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. We'll move on to traffic consultant nominations. I'll put up the first one as Environmental Resolutions, Inc. I'll second. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scogno. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. Uh, second would be CME Associates. I'll second it. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scogno. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. And finally, under traffic consultants, Rose Consulting Services. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scogno? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Ms. Testaverde? Yes. Chairman Sullivan? Yes. Uh, finally, we have uh, forestry consultants. Uh, for those who would say why, when properties are built on or uh, additions have to be made, uh, there's uh, growth on it. There's trees and some of them have to be maintained. There's uh, entire rules uh, under, uh, under uh, land use law for that. So we have to have a forestry uh, uh, profession. Uh, I'll nominate uh, Chestnut AFS, that's uh, Arbor, Arbor Cultural Forestry Services, uh, AKA uh, Gary Lavalla. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor. Yes. Mr. Stoner. Yes. Ms. Chevalier. Yes. Mr. Scogno. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Ms. Testaverde. Yes. Chairman Sullivan. Yes. Board members, we move to number five on the agenda, and that's the adoption. So in the package, you should have received a copy of this year's in, in past years, uh, 2023 Zoning Board of Adjustment Rules and Regulations. Um, if you haven't read them in the past, they're always good to polish up on once a year. Take some time to look at them. Uh, we do want, you never want to run afoul of what the regulations are. That's why we have a professional attorney who sits with us for that. So having said that, I'm going to ask someone to move them for adoption for 2023. Chair, Chair, uh, I'm sorry. May I? Yes, by all means, Mr. Lund. I'm just looking at it and there's there is an edit I notice and uh, I do want to discuss it with Chris. So if uh, the board can take their time and read through it and then we can adopt it at the next meeting, that would be helpful. I'll circulate the edit because um, the special meetings, right? The language in there we needs to, it. Right. yeah. Right, we changed it for COVID, but right before the first paragraph, the language is not clear because typically in practice, 
a developer can make a request for a special meeting and then it's upon the board whether to accept the meeting or not and then that is circulated by the chairman but the language needs to be tweaked a little bit so um, uh, I would just recommend that the board read through um, these and give me any comments if they have any but I do want to discuss it with uh, Mr. Dasty. We'll hold off on, on the adoption of the, of the rules until the next meeting in that case and I'm glad you picked up on that and we'll, we'll have that for next meeting for sure. Again well, I would reiterate that uh, it is always good to take the take a short read it doesn't take long half hour of your time it might uh, particularly the our newest, <coughs> newest member it's a, it's a good thing to uh, catch up on and we'll see how the procedures work. So we will not uh, act on that tonight. It will be moved to the next <coughs> meeting. That brings us uh, this evening. We have two, two applications. Uh, the ring, we're going to require a uh, few variants. Uh, so we pull them in order. Uh, that's 19-2022 uh, Z will be the first one. Kirit uh, Kapadia. I hope I said that right. That's in the R20 zone, block 12360, lot 39, located uh, 17 Hirschman Drive for home addition. It is uh, you, Mr. Capadia? Yes. Please come forward, sir. Are you going to be the only one that testifies this evening? Um, I have my son. Okay, if you, the board attorney has to swear you in, so he'll swear, but you, gentlemen, you can come up, and you can remain standing behind the seats, and after you're sworn in, you can be seated. First, Mr. Capaldi, let's start with you. Uh, raise your right hand, please. Uh, do you solemnly swear that? Uh, do you solemnly swear as the truth of the testimony of which you're about to provide to the board? Perfect. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Capaldi, so it's K I R I T. Yes. Capaldi, K A P A D I A. Yes. Seventeen Kirschman Drive, correct? Yes. Okay. <coughs> and then yourself. What, what's your name? I'm, hold on one second. He's getting the microphone. Oh, there we go. Perfect. You can have you guys speaking to this microphone, okay, please? Thank you. You may seat, uh, you may be seated after you introduce yourself. I'm Daniel Capadia. Can you spell your name for It's D-H-W-A-N-I-L. Same last name, Capadia. Let me just want to verify with you. D-H-W-A-N-I-L? Correct. Okay. All right, Mr. Capadia, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear as to the truth of the testimony for, for which you are to provide to the board? I do. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, please be seated. And you live at the same address, correct? Sorry, yes. <laughs> um, before we start the application, I just want to uh, have to give you an advisory. And because this is a use application, uh, the regulations that I had previously mentioned require the, the presence of a stenographer. And the reason that it does is so that there's an actual record of what the testimony would be, and that comes in handy for a number of reasons, but uh, should the board not uh, act favorably on your application and you want to pursue it, there would be a written record. You have the right to waive that uh, because we do have a recorded record this evening because we are on CATV 15. So uh, I, other than Council giving me advice to the contrary, that's what we would normally advise them, uh, that it's up to them whether they want to waive that right or not. Yes, and it's fairly up to you to waive that right, obviously, and come here and proceed, and if you choose, should you choose to proceed, uh, and it's really just, uh, should you, should, for example, your application be denied, or should a member of the public challenge it, or should the, the township for any reason challenge uh, granting or denial of the ultimate granting or denial of application, it's just to ensure that there is a concrete record. Uh, so for example, if this were to go to, for a judge, there would essentially be a binder that would say everything that was a stenographer record everything that is said, and so it would be no issue, factual issues as to what exactly was said and who said what. So that's just to preserve that for appeal more or less. Uh, so just wanted to advise anyone who appears with a stenographer uh, as to that for going forward. Uh, essentially proceeding tonight, should you wish for it to proceed to a vote, not a continuance, anything like that, um, it would essentially be waiving that right. Yeah, so just a question with that. So it's normal procedure, so we are waiving the right to have a stenographer, or? Well, what we're saying is that the rules mandate that you bring one. Oh. However, you have the, the right to waive that. In your case, this is an application that you're handling on your own. 
you're not using other professionals, right? I asked you, is anybody testifying? This is going to be you and your father testifying as to the facts. Yes. There are certain proofs that need to go on the record. Uh, the board attorney will try and keep us in line, and he might try and help you to make sure that you get them, elicit those uh, for the record. You do not have to uh, accept that. You can say, we'll come back with them. But I, what I advise you was that we do have, at least this is being recorded uh, on, on CATV uh, 15. Am I correct, sir? All right. Uh, so there would be a record, and you have the right to waive the fact that we have a rule that says you need a stenographer. Yeah. And you could proceed then. Yeah, we, we all waive yeah. that. You will waive that, yeah. okay. Uh, because uh, this is a D or a use variance application, as I said, there's certain things that we need to know. In, in essence, what we re received is the information that you're going to put home addition onto the rear of your home, and we received certain plans. And the board members have had a chance to review that. So what we need you to do is, in your own words, uh, simply advise the board uh, what you're going to do, how you're going to accomplish it, what it's going to encompass, uh, the structure, uh, how this is going to be built, the need for this, because what you're asking us to do is change a zoning variance. And in order to do so, there you have to show certain need for what's going on. So I don't know if this is a family issue, but we're going to find out. So you can proceed at your own pace. Then what's going to happen is our professional, the planner, uh, Ms. Salant, may have some questions of you. The board members may have some questions for you. Vice versa, you may have some questions for us. After all that goes down, we have what's called a public portion. That's when I'm going to ask anyone here in the audience tonight if they have any comments on this, for, against, whatever they may have. Should there be favorable or none, either way, then you can ask for me, for me to take a vote for or you can ask for a continuance. If you don't think you've convinced the board sufficiently, you may want to continue if something comes up and you think, I might need some professional help on this. All right? Thank so I try to make it as simple as possible for you. I hope it's not too complicated and too much to absorb. But why don't you just start to tell me what's going on and uh, what you're trying to do. Sure. Um, so the reason uh, what we're looking to do is we want to bring a addition on the home. The addition will consist of a uh, bedroom and a bathroom uh, uh, on the first floor, um, as well as the extension uh, of the family room area. Uh, the need for that is as the family grows and as my parents get older, uh, having a room on the first floor would be useful for them to be able to use that. And that is our intention. So we are looking to put in just a, a single level addition, which will Put it behind the house in the backyard. It will have one master bedroom style suite with a bathroom and an extended family room. Uh, this you say to the rear of the property, correct? Correct. So you wouldn't see this from the front of the property at all? No. Do you live in a homeowners association? Are you under a, a homeowners association? Yes. Have you received uh, any uh, record from them for acceptance or uh, no contest or uh, have you approached them? Uh, we have, we sent out the notification as part of the regulations that we were going to do this, but we haven't applied at the Homeowners Association for that reason. Ms. So as, um, I think I have it in my memo, as part of the condition of approval, should the board act favorably, my office will require a written certification yes. from the HOA that they do not have any objections to this. Yeah, understood, and we'll, we'll file for it as soon as we have that. Sure. So any decision would be contingent upon the approval of the Homeowners Association? That is correct. So even if we voted favorably, should they deny, then the resolution would not stand. That is correct. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to tell me at this point? No. Mrs. Salant, do you have uh, questions for the uh, Um. I don't have any questions per se. I reviewed the application. I tried to do some bit of uh, homework on their part because typically when there is a D4 uh, use variance or a floor area ratio variance, um, what we require is the applicant to justify why we should allow that additional square footage, right? 
So what I did is I looked at our tax map, I looked at the square footage of the homes in the neighborhood, and um, there are other homes that have similar FAR. Now, this project is part of Yardi Manor, right? And it was um, approved as an alternate development or cluster zoning development many years back, which meant that although the zone, underlying zone is R20, they were approved with a smaller lot size in lieu of having open space. And uh, that is why you will notice in the review memo, the R20 standards do not apply to the project. It's the R9 standards that apply because that's what it was approved of. Um, it's a little complicated in Old Bridge. I was, I literally went through these cluster zone developments. There are apparently 30 of them. Unfortunately, other than some uh, employees that have been working for many years or who have records, there is no way to track down these cluster developments. So uh, I'm getting familiar with it, but what I want to do is I want to map them on our zoning map. So it's not so difficult for the zoning board members as well as anybody who was reviewing the application that it was part of special zoning standards. And then uh, things will become easier and at some point create ordinances specific to these so that they will have their own bulk standards. They are enumerated in the zoning ordinance and there is no more confusion uh, because now these projects are fully built. All the 30 cluster, 30 some cluster developments are already built and when, when uh, people like the applicant come in, it's, it's always a challenge. So it's something on our list to clean up and make it easier for the applicant as well and avoid having them come back to the board. But it's work in progress. And, and this has been going on with many of you. We've seen more and more of this, and the board, the board is well aware of that, those that, that seated, have been seated here for a few years. And uh, because of the way they constructed, we just said one with the, with the papers, where they, uh, it was an overuse of the landscape area. But uh, when they developed the, the cluster zones like that, this is uh, something that we should bring to the attention council at the end of the year yes the that that board. is so right now the zoning office is working with us to create a list of these properties i want it to be a part of our annual report so that the, the and actually the council is fully aware because i have been going in front of the council and making those changes uh on like i recently did the Woodhaven section OC2, which is which fronts on Texas Road. So they are aware that there will be many more ordinances uh, such as that one that will come in front of them. So yes, but it will be part of the annual report. But other than that, I really don't have any uh, concerns. Um, I noticed that the adjacent homes also have similar FAR, so it's pretty consistent. And that is why I created that map to help you review um, the neighboring uh, floor areas of uh, homes. So I think that that helps. The only thing I would say is one of the common is um, sometimes what happens, it becomes a bit challenging when a homeowner comes in. We have the existing survey and then we have the architectural drawings, but they don't give us a site plan which merges to, to the existing home and what is proposed. So it's very hard for us to calculate the setbacks and make sure they meet. In your case, um, I know my office tried their best, but when you come back, like we, there is one condition we have put in that please submit revised plans to show those details on the site plans. Your architect can do that for you. It, it shouldn't be too cumbersome, but have that on your submission so that we can verify the numbers are accurate and everything works fine. Because we didn't have the square footage of your existing home. We actually had to measure it and come up with those. But it's easy for the architect to do it. Okay. So this is what, what, what the planner is saying. You're going to have to supply revised plans. Uh, we can approve or disapprove uh, on a vote tonight, but it's contingent on the, the architect with 
file plans so that would the township would need in order to give it the go ahead. You would get a resolution incumbent upon that. Right. So what happens is once uh, at the next meeting, the board approves the resolution. So you'll take a vote tonight. A resolution will be prepared by the board attorney. They will memorialize it at the next meeting. Once they memorialize it, you'll get a call from my office saying that your resolution is ready for pickup. You take the resolution and work with your architect to create revised site plans. Once you have the revised submission, bring it back to my office. I will review it, I will okay it, and then you're ready to go for permits to the building department. Because then when the zoning office reviews it again, they want to make sure everything is consistent. It is much smoother forward. So um, make sure to come back to my office and we'll take it from there. Sure. And um, in the resolution or in the instructions, you will have exactly what you need on there, right? With, uh, with the right. plans, as you can see, the actually, if you just have, uh, if you stop by my office or ask for a meeting with me, or have your architect call me, that would should be sufficient before he submits any plans, so that you're not wasting paper. I hate wasting paper. Perfect. So. Thank you. You understand what you're speaking about? Yeah. There. Let me ask you one question. Uh, you're at lot number thirty on Kirschman. Uh, if you were looking, if I stand in front of your house and looking at your house two houses to your right, it would be lot 40 and 41. Their FAR is also above uh, the standard for there. Did they do an extension? To, to well, the left, I'm assuming. Uh, if, you, if I was standing, your lot 30, if I was standing directly in front of your house looking at your house, it would be the two lots to your right. The next two. Okay. Yeah. Did they do any extensions on their home? Um, you, I, I have you lived there long enough to know that? Or yes, no? we have lived there long enough. But I think they, they have had a, a pool put in, but um, not well, sure if the extension was... Well, Mrs. Wan was saying these other homes in the area that yes. have, a, have a higher uh, FAR. Yeah. That happens to be two of them right now. Yes. So I was curious if they did similar extensions. I don't know if they came before us. You know what? There is, I mean, I'll have to go and look for it. I don't it. think it's necessary, but. But I didn't really go looking for it because the tax record has it clear, so I didn't have a reason to go. I'm assuming because otherwise the zoning office, when they denied yours, they would have gone and checked and probably slammed a denial or a violation for sure. And Mr. Capone, just for the record, uh, uh, how, how long have you lived there? Or how, how long have you owned the property? Right since, like, you know, it was built, so that was removing the, the house in 1999. And since then, yeah. And how many people live there now? Uh, now it's a total of five. Total of five, okay. And that's part of that five is for the reason you're seeking that. I'm trying to just get as part of as part of the burden that you have to meet. And it, sure, did you have a chance to review this? It was sent via email to you that has the general comments. It also has uh, what you were saying in terms of the uh, same, submitting revised plans, but also in terms of the certain things they have to meet, showing that it meets, for example, uh, furthers the goals of the master plan, essentially trying to just help you build your case a little bit in terms of showing that it doesn't negatively affect uh, the, and that's what we're all kind of doing a little bit. It's just in showing that, you know, in the surrounding if the uh, surrounding homes had a similar thing, that it's within character in the surrounding neighborhood. Yeah. In, in other words, the only issue you have here is because of the because of the zone and because of the mathematics. When you put this addition on, it's going to look, I'm sure, perfect, uh, and probably no one will even notice it unless they walk in your backyard. Uh, but it triggers a variance and and. It, it's the only variance, as a matter of fact. It won't trigger any setbacks. It won't trigger any front yard setbacks, side yard setback, or rear yard setbacks. So it's just the floor area ratio. So uh, you're doing this to better your your family. It's a, it's, it's a need a need that you have it's, at this particular time in life. Correct. It's it's to better the family, and again, as parents age, you know, having them climb up the stairs and things, it will. Make it that we can live there so that it's particularly on, on, yes. on the one level because you have another level. Yes. Yeah. Just, Ms. Swan, go right ahead. Can I try to help? Please help, yes. <laughs> 
So typically, when you ask for any type of use variance, right, the law requires that you present positive criteria and negative criteria. If there are any negative criteria, the idea is the positive criteria should overcome uh, the negative criteria if there are any. Now, in your case, and typically a use variance is represented by an attorney, a planner, and the planner does the justification. I'm gonna just help you testify uh, and present those proofs, right? So in terms of negative criteria, the addition that you're proposing, is the addition visible from the um, street? It should not be because it's directly just expanding back into the backyard. There's no, nothing on the side. So in your opinion, will there be any visual negative impact to a passerby or to your neighbor? It should not be, again, it's just one level, so it doesn't even cover any of the views of our neighbors in the backyard or their backyards as well. In terms of the side yard, is there a fence that separates the side yard or is there some landscaping that uh, visually, uh, you know, is a visual barrier to the screening, uh, to the addition? Yeah, so uh, both sides of the neighbors, including we have a open space in the backyard, there is fencing all uh, around the property. And your property, if I'm not mistaken, backs the open space, right? Uh, I'm sorry? Your property backs the open space, right? Correct. So on the rear side, there is no neighbor that really can, um, that the addition really hampers or hinders their view, correct? Correct. It, it is wide open space, almost the length of the So now property. we have established that there are no negative impacts. In terms of positive impacts, um, you're building this addition to help support your parents live in the house with you. You have been a resident for 20 some years and you want to continue to grow your family at that location, correct? Correct. The... I, think, I think we covered it. Right. In no way you put on the record that you plan on renting this as, a, as an, another apartment for an outsider or a Airbnb or anything along that line. Right? No, it's primarily for strictly, family use. Strictly for fit. Yes. Let me just see if the other the board members might want to have a comment. I'll go down to my left, Mr. Rizzo. Oh, okay. Mr. Scott, Yeah, Mr. Scott. Mr. Chevalier. Mr. Stone. Yeah, I just have one question. Um, what are you doing for heating in that room? Okay. In the plans tour, right? It'll be full, it's a bedroom and bathroom, so it'll be regular, just conti contiguous. I guess the, the heat system, whatever you have in there. Will be expanded. Right? Right. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's not separated from the house in any way. If you, I think it's up there on the screen, the, the drawing. It'll it's be full just, enclosed rooms, not, yeah, not, yeah. A, not a sun room. Yeah, okay. okay. So we will expand the heating and the air conditioning to that area. Okay. And to that point, uh, in terms of aesthetic, will that be the same aesthetic as the, as the remainder of the house or the current components of the house? Correct. We will make sure the outside, the sidings and the roofing, everything is consistent with the rest of the house. It won't be different. Um, the interior, again, will be painted and everything will be consistent. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Connor, anything? No questions. Uh, will, you, will you have access to the backyard directly from that room? Um, no, I... No opening from, from that room or from the new addition on the family room to get to the outside? No. Just in case of the safety? So what, what will happen is the room is going through the... It, the addition is being built where the current access to the backyard is, the patio doors. Uh, what is going to happen is those patio doors will be moved to the side of the house where the addition is not there. So we will so we'll still have the access to the backyard. It will just be, instead of in the middle of the, the house, it will just be on the side of the house. Okay, no, I was looking at it from a different point. I was looking at it from the fact that you're, you're moving further away and I don't know where how the exits are from the other rooms. I was looking from it. Uh, because you're going to have to see parents a little elderly for a safety factor that there would be access directly out of that room, God forbid anything. That's, oh. that's the point. 
the reason I'm asking. Okay. Thank yeah, in, in the plans we, we have it, but that is a good good uh, point you make. So we'll look to maybe have a door that exits right outside of the additional bedroom. So yeah, if any emergency, they have a way to go outside. Uh, if, can I, can yeah, I, I think there's you? already a uh, access. Uh, the access door is quite close yeah. to the addition because sometimes what happens is when you have direct access from a bedroom like that, heating and cooling becomes a problem and it's, it, it get, the room gets much colder. I would prefer it the way it is because it's pretty close to the... Yeah, yeah. Easily to get to it is if you look it at is the actually if you look at the floor plan. I'm, I'm terrible at oh okay. No, it's there. Males would do much better. I'm not a spatial person. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Testaverde? No questions. And uh Ms. Swan, anything no, else? No questions. Counselor. You have anything else you want to tell us at this point? I'd like to go to a public portion if that's okay with you. Yes. All right. This is matter nineteen dish twenty twenty two Z, a location is seventeen Kershner Drive. For a home addition to the rear of the home, requiring uh, no bulk uh, variances but a uh, use variance for uh, D floor area, uh, floor area ratio. Does anybody here in the room want to be heard in this matter? Please raise your hand or stand. No one has, I'll close the public portion. Any final comments you'd like to make? Uh, thank you for the time for reviewing our application. Okay, That's, it, it, it seems pretty straightforward. Uh, I recognize the fact that. Uh, as we age, and, and, and I'm one of those people as well, uh, we, we do need the help of others, and it's uh, it's admirable that you're willing to do that and keep the family unit together. Not only that, but staying here in Old Bridge, which is important to us as well, to keep the community strong and your investment strong. So having said that, I'm gonna ask and see if anybody wants to approve this for the D4 floor area ratio. Is there a second? Second, Chicago. Second by uh, Mr. Scott, no roll call, please. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Stoner? Yes. Ms. Chevalier? Yes. Mr. Scogno? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Ms. Testaverde? Yes. Chairman Sullivan? Yes. We'll have a resolution next month uh, at our next meeting, uh, so I wish you well. Don't forget that there's two things that you have to do. It's got to match. You have to, I'm sorry, three. You have to get a letter from the HOA <laughs> sent to the, uh, to the planning department, and you have to uh, have your architect redraw the plan so that it's in the appearance in the, with the planning department. Okay? Thank you very much for being here this night. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, the uh, final matter of the evening, we'll move forward, is 52-2022-Z. Uh, it's uh, Lewis Gross, Grossvener, uh, I'm going to ask you to pronounce that when you come up because I think I probably didn't get it right. It's Louise too, right? Lois. It's Lois. This is the R5 Zones Block 26021 Lot 81261 Shoreline Circle Single Family Home. It's going to require a C and D variance. Ma'am, you're going to be the only one to testify this evening? Yes. You heard the. you were probably here for all the uh, advice we gave earlier about, uh, particularly about waiving a right to stenography because there would be a D variance involved in this. Did you understand what we meant by that? Yes. The rules and regulations? Okay. The board attorney is going to swear you in and then we'll, on the record we'll ask you to please state that. Can you, uh, can you please raise your right hand? I do solemnly swear to tell the truth of the assessment you're about to provide to the board. Did you, all you gotta say is I do. I do. <laughs> Did you understand what I said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the, those are the two things that no, you don't need to repeat. Uh, and we have your. Uh, you live at the address. No. No, it's a, it's a vacant. Uh, it's, so, a, it's a vacant lot. So what is your address? One forty-two Oxford. Thank you. Yes, All right, could you pronounce your last name for me once again? Grosvenor. Grosvenor. Thank you. I'm sorry that I didn't get it right. Uh, you have been sworn, and I'm going to ask you, uh, because of the fact that you don't have a stenographer, are you going to waive that right? Yes. Okay, thank you. We can move forward. Uh, th that's a directional mic, and you really, literally have to, yes, direct you, direct voice into it. Uh, we know from what you have sent us 
You want to build a two-story single-family home on an existing foundation. The previous home was destroyed by fire. Yes. This is down in the uh, Bay Area, correct? Lawrence Home. Yeah. Uh, and did you own the home when it was destroyed? Why don't you just tell us in your own words how you came about this, uh, what you're looking to do, how the situation happened, and anything else we will, you know, you'd like to tell us. Uh, okay, I usually walk along that path okay. over there, and as I was walking, I saw the sign that I always wanted to be able to house, and so I bought the land. And so um, there is an existing foundation and then on the front there is an existing patio brick in the front um, and so we're just looking to build a two floor single family two bedrooms on the first floor um, keep that patio in the front area as you can see there. and um, have a second floor which is like a home office Going to stay within the footprint. You're not really going to stay within. The We're footprint just the extending the back. foundation, right? The There's obviously a number of uh, variances that are necessary for approval of that. Right. Um, I'm looking at this, and it says uh, we need uh, minimum front yard where you're adding on maximum floor area ratio, which is, that triggers the. D variance, which the previous applicant had, and of course, uh, minimum side yard setbacks uh, and combined existing non conforming. Most of those homes were well aware that they don't, particularly with side yard setbacks, they don't comply because they were, they were homes that were um, vacation homes way back, uh, and that was the history there. And they were like, so about uh, bungalows, thank you. and. You know, you could reach out at one side and touch your neighbor's house. So we understand that the, there's some hardship there because it's, it's difficult to comply with the regulations. Nonetheless, we kind of have to, we need you to try and put a few things on the record. Um, you're extending out front Why You had our architect obviously draw this, I would assume. Yes. Okay. Uh, is it necessary? In other words, if we could minimize the, the, the uh, you already have a parking issue there as well, right? Just one car that can park. Yeah, the requirements two, you have, we're, you're it's saying no. Car on the yeah, front right side. So, so, um, this one. Oh, um, your plan shows that there will be one car. Right. Um, the problem with that is it does not meet the standards for parking. Our ordinance requires that the uh, curb length to the car be 23 feet and the width be 10 feet. Um, since the, the space is 15 and a half feet, it really technically doesn't qualify as a parking stall because the width is less too. The width is only six and a half. So where the ordinance requires um, two parking spaces. In reality, although your drawing shows it, there is no parking that is fully compliant with the ordinance. What, what Chairman Sullivan is asking is, is there a way you could shrink it in the front to create a legal parking spot? So the spot where the cars are now, the mm -hmm. car parks now, you're saying that's too small? Yeah. There is no car that parks yeah, now. There is a car that parks. No, that's on your plan. It, Sorry? That's on your plan. No, but it's existing there now. But there is no house there now. No, but the, there is an asphalt area. Right, that's the where, driveway. Where the cars were Correct. parked. But it's your driveway, but the driveway width is also not compliant. And you're in front of the board asking, or a relief on that because the ordinance requires a 10 feet driveway typically. And I understand in Lawrence Harbor area, this, these lots are smaller, so it's hard. But what the chairman is asking is, is there a way you could shrink the building footprint 
A, because you don't have parking, we would create then a decent parking space in the front. Two, because you're asking for numerous variances, including landscape area ratio, which means that you're, you're proposing a bigger home than what is permitted in terms of the lot size plus the floor area. So we're trying to see if we can minimize some variances that you're asking for. When you say landscape, are you saying the front or the back? No, so for any lot, the township has a requirement that X amount of percentage of your lot should be landscape. It's impervious coverage, where which means is it's either grass or it's maintained in the natural form. It appears just looking at, because your, those calculations were not provided by the architect to me, just by the look of it, it appears that you don't meet the landscape area ratio requirement. The township's ordinance requires a 0.45, and it looks like it's more, much more than that. So what we are asking is, have you looked at the, did you look at the review memo? Yes, I did, I got it this morning. Right, this so um, there I'm asking you in my review memo, have you considered shrinking the size of the building to try and comply with some of the requirements of the ordinance? Even if there's an existing patio area in the front? Yeah, but you're add also adding stuff in the back, right? Only in the back, not in the front. The front has a patio area. Do you have a picture? I sure do. It's existing. Was it submitted as part of the record? Did you submit any pictures? I didn't see any. No. no. Okay. Is that on your phone? Yes. Okay. Um, catch your commit. I don't know if you want to, unfortunately, look at the picture that you can't uh, maintain as a. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, the problem is even with the near maps, Google Earth imagery, um, it still shows the house. It doesn't show the um, uh, the front. I would have uh, hoped that there were some pictures to support the testimony since there is no planner or an attorney. Um, I'm just trying to see how we can help. Um, yeah, the the, uh, Google image, I think on the Google survey, image, I think on the survey, it shows the front. Head. Can you pull up the survey, Natalie? Can you zoom in? Right. So you see where? Where is it? The line that says um, six point five, right? You see that where it says pavers? Yes. Right. Okay. That's there. That's existing there. And that and right next to it is where the car yes. parks. So it's asphalt. It's asphalt. Yes, there's a spot that says asphalt. Yes, correct. Yes, asphalt with a car. Did the architect put this, other than the front extension, completely on top of the uh, footprint, meaning the uh, foundation that's there? He started the, the building from the, where the existing foundation is. So this pavers, yep. then, then the foundation then begins. Did he, did he go, he went beyond the uh, foundation in the rear too, I would think. Only in the rear, not the front. Only in the rear. No. <clears throat> so those pavers will stay there, pretty much. Can I if, ask you? Sure. What is this for? That's, I believe, is the, sh the curve. So your papers extend into the straight street? Straight to the curb. That's how it is. Yeah. yeah. So if we have to change the front, that's not a problem. Because we're not do, really doing much to the front. I just wanted in some plants, that's all. Well, certainly, uh, I, you know, you have a great plan, and, and we certainly want to see the, the land repurposed, and, and I know you you want to build right. a home there and live there. And we'd like to work with you and, and try and make this fit, <clears throat> be <clears throat> excuse me, somewhat in compliance. 
so we could grant these variances with clear conscience. But um, the parking has been an issue down there, and we have to make sure we're going to be able to allow parking off the street. It's already a, a huge problem down there. I don't know what you know about the area. Right, but that's why that space is there where the car no, I understand. Yeah, that. So typically, I've seen that the newer homes in Lawrence Harbor, they have parking on the ground floor and the living space is above the garage for the same reason because Lawrence Harbor uh, has an issue with parking. It's very hard to find parkings there. So the newer, newer homes that come in, they typically <coughs> will have a garage on the ground floor and then you have stairs that take you to the living room and then you have the bedrooms on the house. If we could, we, we yeah. can always remove the pavers and put two cars there. You can put, put this one space for a car. My, my goal would be to create at least one conforming parking stall. Okay. I mean, the board can grant uh, variants on the second one provided we create at least one conforming. Uh, and that's what... I was hoping for. So the asphalt area there you're saying doesn't conform parking? No. My car fixed it. So, I mean, <laughs> yes, it depends. If you're trying to park, uh, I'm not saying yours is a Mini Cooper, but some cars that have lesser length, you can definitely fit it. But the state has requirements <coughs> for residential. The township has requirements for parking stall size. So typically, it's 10 feet by 20 feet. When you have a curb and a single family home, the township requires a 23 feet length. Um, I would be okay if it's less and we grant a waiver, but at least it should be a little more than 15 feet. Okay, so um, you're saying to move, go, go further back? Yeah. Same width, but go further back. take a recess for two minutes. <clears throat> Mr. Lund wants to look into some issues and we'll return uh, shortly. Okay. We'll be off the record. <clears throat> Mr. Connor? Here. Mr. Stoner? Yes. Ms. Chevalier? Here. Mr. Scogno? Here. Ms. Andrews? Here. Ms. Testaverde? Here. Mr. Izzo? Here. Thank you. We were on uh, matter 52-2022Z, located 261 Circle. I think that uh, a conference has been had, and I believe that the applicant is going to ask for continuation at this right. point. There are some matters that you'd like to, I believe, check with your architect before yeah. we move any further. I know it's a complex issue, and I know you're trying to do, go on your own on this, so we would like to give you the best advice we can, but of course we want to see you be happy as well. So. I do think that's probably a good idea if you do consult with them and perhaps with a, your professional could consult with the township professionals. It might, maybe it, it might be able to lessen the, or mitigate some of the, the, uh, the variances in, in some ways. And I think that would probably be better a better build for you to live in as well. That's just my personal opinion of the record. And you are going to ask for continuance, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to turn your <coughs> side and turn off. Yeah, just push the button and it should turn green. Push it on. Thank you. Yeah. Right. you are going to be asking for a continuance. Yes, correct? I'm asking for a continuance. All right. And we're going to put this on February 2? Yes. That's going to be enough time. All right. Those here this evening, uh, this matter is uh, going to be placed on the agenda for uh, February 2nd, 2023, next month. Uh, so there will be no further hearing on it tonight. It will be continued to that date. We thank you for coming in. We thank you for your time. We look forward to seeing you again. And I uh, hope we can help you out and right. rectify that situation. Okay? Happy New Year. Yeah, and just to clarify, so no, no additional re notice will be required. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, that is the uh, last matter for the evening. Any uh, comments from the council? Nothing on my end. Thank you.
forward for a busy this year. Uh, a lot of applications, exciting projects lined up. So uh, looking forward to working with all of you. Uh, the next meeting would be uh, virtual. So, so the meeting is uh, slated for January 19. As of now, we do not have any complete C variance application. So we will send out an email next week confirming, but we may cancel that meeting because we don't have a C application. We have a lot of D applications pending, so we will have a busy February 2nd night. Uh, yes. any, any comments on my left? Uh, Mr. Rizzo, welcome. Uh, I hope you get to enjoy the party. Just maybe look forward to it. Next month, we will have another member uh, joining us that I guess was too late to reach the council before the reorganization meeting. So I'm told that next month we'll have another swearing in to fill the final uh, position of uh, alternate number two. So once again, I, wel I, I welcome you, sir, and I wish everybody a happy new year. Someone want to call for an adjournment? I'll call for an adjournment. Ms. Chevrolet, all in favor? Aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.